Hi, and welcome to Enchantment of Eternity's Best 90s Star Trek Episodes. In this video, I'll go year by year in the 90s to name what I felt was the best episode of a Star Trek series in the 90s. So this video is a part of 90s Week, and uh, when I was thinking about what was important uh, to 90s culture, uh, to me, it's Star Trek. To me, the 90s were the heyday of Star Trek, where it was at its height. Most people who think of Star Trek might think of the original series, so they think of the 60s, or they might think of the original series movies, so they might think of the 80s. But for me, I connect more with the next generation and the Space Nine era, and during the 90s, Star Trek was what, at its height, has, for most of the 90s, it had at least two shows going at the same time as well as the occasional movie so to me when i think of 90s i think of star trek so to celebrate this i decided then rather than going through the best episodes of each season or each series it would be interesting to ask what is the best episode of each year of this peak decade I will say the movies were considered for this, however, they never end up coming out on top, therefore they won't be mentioned. Uh, as it just so happens, I felt that the episodes were always better than the films, as I always have of the am of the mind that Star Trek has always been much more better suited for television than film anyway. So let's get this started with 1990, where the best episode is Yesterday's Enterprise, with runner-ups uh, The Offspring and Reunion. It was actually a bit jarring for me to realize that Yesterday's Enterprise was first released all the way back in 1990 and was actually written in 1989. I never really think of it as that old, perhaps because I didn't first see it until the mid-90s, but when you compare this episode to other shows airing in 1990, this completely blows it away and in my opinion was way ahead of its time. I've been on the record uh, multiple times saying that this is one of my all-time favorite Star Trek episodes and it is one of the most popular ones as well because it uses typical Star Trek devices like time travel and alternate timelines to ultimate storytelling effect. Getting into 1991, where the best episode of Star Trek is The Drumhead, with runner-ups uh, Darmok and Silicon Avatar. Uh, the Drumhead is one of the best examples of Star Trek making social commentary and doing it in a very effective and dramatic way. This is uh, one of the episodes that really gets into the heart of Picard's character and shows that he is a man who will stand up for his principles no matter what. But more than that, it's eerie how this episode would become even more relevant to modern day society a decade after its release, after the hysteria of the 9-11 attacks in the Iraq war, as this episode warns of the dangers of letting fear of your enemy control you to the point where you are taking the fundamental liberties away from average citizens in order to justify that fear. Moving on to 1992, where the best Star Trek episode is The Inner Light, with runner-ups Chain of Command and The Quality of Life. The Inner Light is one of the most emotional and well-acted dramas in the entire Star Trek catalog. The Inner Light is an episode even uh, those who have never seen Star Trek love, as it tells an extremely emotional story of Picard living an entire lifespan in the span of 25 minutes, as it was uh, you know, a way for that civilization that has been dead for centuries to leave behind its legacy, and the personal impact that it had on Picard is something that was severely felt, which is how helped a lot by the masterful way the story unfolds through the use of subtlety as it never really hits you over the head uh, with what it wants you to feel and instead allows you to feel these feelings in a natural way. Next is 1993 where the best Star Trek episode is Duet with runner-ups, tapestry, and frame of mind. Duet is my all-time favorite Star Trek episode as it tells an amazingly suspenseful and emotionally powerful drama through the use of mainly just two people in a room talking and I absolutely love shows and films that manage to pull it off and pull it off well. This is also a great example of amazing acting by both the actors that played Major Kira and Eamon Maritza as you could feel the pain and anguish and anger and defiance in their performance and in addition to being great drama, the episode had uh, unexpected twists and turns that ended in one of the most powerful endings I have ever seen. 
Next, getting into 1994, where the best Star Trek episode is All Good Things, with runner-ups, preemptive strike, and civil defense. 1994 was a year of transition for Star Trek, as the next generation was ending and we were preparing for the next-gen movie, as well as a new Star Trek series coming in the following year. So it was an incredibly busy time for Star Trek, which makes it even more impressive that they managed to put up one of the best final episodes of all time, as all good things so perfectly embodies everything that made the next generation great, as you have time travel, Q, appearances from old cast members, the Romulans, weird spatial anomalies and through it all great suspenseful uh, storytelling that speaks to the human condition and humanity's potential. This was the perfect way to sum up Star Trek in one episode uh, that has never been paralleled before or since. So next year is 1995, where the best episode is The Visitor, with runner-ups, improbable calls, the die is cast, and Eye of the Needle. Uh, the Visitor was another touching story using weird science fiction storytelling methods. Uh, this story takes uh, the unconventional approach of beginning the episode many years in the future, where Jake is an old man who gets a young visitor who he tells a, the story of how he lost his father, and having that story be told in such a way gave it an added personal touch as uh, the heart of all the science fiction phenomena we see a story about a young man dealing with the loss of his father and how that loss never went away because his father actually didn't die and instead was trapped in subspace and would appear every couple of years which would cause Jake to become obsessed with bringing his father back to life to the detriment of his own life. It was such a touching story with a very powerful ending that was definitely one of the most memorable and noteworthy episodes of Deep Space Nine and certainly the highlight of 1995. Moving on to 1996, where the best Star Trek episode is The Quickening, with runner-ups Deadlock and Remember. The Quickening was another emotionally powerful, dark episode that was the signature of Deep Space Nine that told the heartbreaking story of Bashir struggling to cure an uncurable disease on a plague-ridden planet that has lost all hope. It was powerful on so many levels, seeing the people who lost hope and who had a revered figure, Trevian, who would uh, kill people who were doomed to die from the horrible plague, and he would kill them in the most pleasant way. And that was contrasted by Dr. Bashir, who came in all full of hope, thinking that he could solve everyone's problem and instead actually made things worse. But through it all, there was one woman who believed in him, and although he didn't manage to save her life, he saved the life of her child, making it so their children would be immune to this plague. It was such a heartbreaking and unconventional episode where the good guys don't win in the end, but instead we get a bittersweet half-victory that has a profound impact on Bashir's outlook on life. Next is 1997, which was a great year for Star Trek, where the best episode is Year of Hell, with runner-ups Behind the Lines and Scorpions. 1997 was the year both Deep Space Nine and Voyager reinvented themselves by introducing phenomenal show-defining uh, storylines, such as introducing the Dominion War and Station Takeover story arc to Deep Space Nine, and introducing the Borg as a new adversary, along with the post-Borg character of Seven of Nine to the crew of Voyager. But what stands out most to me is my all-time favorite Voyager episode and one of the best uses of weird time distortion and in, uh, Star Trek Year of Hell. This is the episode Ronald D. Moore said uh, is what the entire series of Voyager should have been like, and I can understand that outlook as we see the crew at their worst and get to see uh, what they're really made of as they have to deal with the constant threat of attack which leaves Voyager in a state of utter destruction where only the senior officers remain. On top of that you get a great butterfly effect type time travel story with a crazed man uh, played absolutely brilliantly by uh, the great actor Kurtwood Smith uh, who plays Anorex who becomes obsessed with preventing the death of his wife uh, and he's willing to wipe out entire species from existence in order to do so and seeing Janeway confront him in an epic final battle was the stuff true epic episodes are made out of. 
Next, we come to 1998, which was another great year where it was hard to choose just one episode, but I'll have to say the best episode is In the Pale Moonlight, with runner-ups Drone and Timeless. In the Pale Moonlight was a breakthrough, uh, unconventional episode that showed the dark side of Starfleet, but more specifically the impact war can have on honor otherwise honorable people, as it tells the story of our main hero, Captain Sisko, who goes down the rabbit hole of lying, stealing, and being complicit in murder for the ultimate goal of tricking the Romulans into joining the Dominion War in order to save the Federation from annihilation. This, I have to say, is the best use of the Dominion War story arc, rather than the huge epic battles, uh, what makes for far more interesting drama is seeing the quiet intrigue and political maneuvering that is done behind closed doors that can have a much bigger impact on the state of the galaxy than anyone realizes. Not only that, but it also uses one of my favorite characters on the show, Garrick, to the best effect by having him be the devil that whispers in Sisko's ear, and he's so effective he manages to convince Sisko to do things no self-respecting Starfleet captain would do, and it was just played off so well. So finally, we get to 1999, the final year of the 90s, so it's quite fitting that the best episode that year is the final episode of Deep Space Nine, What We Leave Behind, with runner-ups tacking into the wind and Warhead. What We Leave Behind wasn't a perfect finale, as the whole Paul Wraith Gold Ducat storyline felt a bit anticlimactic, and the you know, romanticizing flashback montages were tad cheesy and went on for a bit too long. But, in so many other ways, this episode was the perfect ending to Deep Space Nine, as in rather than showing the good guys defeat the bad guys in an epic and just war, it showed the horror and the cost of war as the victory was bittersweet as it cost many innocent Cardassian civilians their lives. And seeing this complex dynamic play out and how it affected the characters involved like Kira, Odo, and Garrick was so emotional and played out so well, and it was great seeing Sisko's reaction to it as he was glad the war was over, but wasn't about to celebrate over the, over the bodies of dead civilians, and it perfectly wrapped up all the personal character stories uh, that were at the heart of this great show, and it was, did it in such a perfect and bittersweet way, as we had many sad partings, but new relationships budding as well. And I'm not just talking about Bashir and Ezri, but also Kira becoming the commander of Deep Space Nine, Nog becoming the chief of operations, Worf becoming the Federation ambassador to Kronos, Odo returning to his people, Sisko facing his destiny with the prophets, and Quark struggling on through uh, the face of all this change, just as he always does. So all in all, a perfect ending to a great show and the best episode of 1999. So that's it for my favorite Star Trek episodes of the 90s. Be sure to check out my channel for many more Star Trek videos to come, including my episode reviews, which will resume next week. And be sure to check out the rest of 90s week, and also check out my channel for many more videos on shows like Game of Thrones, Mr. Robot, Dark Matter, and more. And thanks a lot for watching.